So the next speaker is someone when it comes to the IT. Top, 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 top. He'll keep it very brief, but pay attention and listen to this knowledge. Futurist Kwame. Please clap for him. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. If you can hear me, um, I just want to do a quick pulse check because of what we're about to do. First, I want you to give somebody a high five and say you're looking nice. The boys, I just gave you a chance to take the number fast. Fast. That's your opportunity. You already got the number. Uncle, Uncle Tommy is fine. He doesn't need help. Now let's do a quick pulse check. We have men in this house. Do we have men? If I have men, can I get a yeah, yeah? yeah. No, this one. Be like, do we have men? Yeah. I crossed it by plan. So men, we know how they do them. If I have men, can I get a yeah, yeah? yeah. Now, if I have amazing women, can I get a yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The pulse check is done. All right. Um, first, I want us to, uh, I think everybody has done it, but if we can once more celebrate the man that has differentiated himself um, in this landscape of craziness, Kobe Che, for putting this together. I am so proud of what you've done. Um, all the times you call, I'm glad that it's paying out. Uh, can we also celebrate the retinue of speakers that we've had here, everybody that's come before? Absolutely fantastic. This is like a, a family reunion for me because it's uh, all... Uh, mentors and big brothers and big uncles in the space. I see you smart. How are you doing? Um, and it's really great to be here. The people I started this, I actually started as a blogger about 15 years ago when the word blogging wasn't sexy. Uh, one of the guys who has been here since then um, is the man Eugene in cancer of Nkonkonsa. Can we please celebrate him? Um, this man is a top dog for those of you who know. I always say that uh, Ronnie and GH Hyper and all the boys that are eating today should organize a, a session and go and see Chris Vincent of Ghana Celebrities, uh, Nee of Ghana Music, and this man that is sitting here. So let's celebrate him one more time. All right. So my work here is to talk to you about technology and AI and how it's going to affect society. And because I'm dealing with different kinds of people, since I got up here, I've seen students, I've seen business people, people in the media, young entrepreneurs, people who are building innovative stuff to move the continent forward. I need to make this as open as possible. So for the next 12 minutes, 18 seconds, I will try. I want you to have your eye here because the conversation we're going to be having is going to be here. Now, for the person who's controlling, uh, where are you? Can you give me a wave so we work together? So if I do this, we go to the next slide. So it's, it seems seamless. It will look like I have an invisible owner. Yeah, follow me. Let's go. All right. So let's start the conversation from here. Next slide. Oh. I won't say it again. Um, how many of us love movies? Let me stand here so you can see my screen well. You love movies. Uh, and you've seen this movie before. Anybody? Uh, that's Tom Cruise. Uh, the movie is called Minority Report. Anyone? Have you seen it? All right. Why do I start from here? In this movie, uh, Tom Cruise is playing a very interesting role. The role that he's playing, uh, he is a policeman in a police department. The police department is called pre crime. The idea is very simple. Uh, what they do is they use different data points uh, and they predict today those who are going to commit crime tomorrow and they arrest them today. That's the movie. Uh, it would be interesting to know a group of Chinese people saw the movie. They thought it was a brilliant idea. Thanks to the growth in technology, this actually exists. And they are able to predict to an 89.5% accuracy whether or not people are going to commit crime tomorrow. If they bring this to Ghana, hey! Uh, how many of us have seen these types of headlines? Um, in the last few weeks, in the last few months, you've seen that the robots are coming for our jobs. Anybody? 
Uh, are you worried about that? Well, I wanted to help you, uh, for you to understand what is going on here. Why is it happening now? And w what is the reason why we're seeing what we're seeing? Uh, very simple. I want you to read some of those same headlines. Uh, the one at the top says, Automation in Britain stares unrest in labor. The one down says, Mr. Robot often outshines his master. Uh, it will be interesting for you to know that those two headlines are from 1933 and 1951. The robots have been coming for our jobs. Uh, for those of you who are worried, this is a video that I wanted to play for you. You need to move the mouse a bit and try and play the video. Uh, if you're worried about losing your job, uh, there is somebody here that I want you to see. Uh, so that is a nice guy doing the work. And if you're worried, you are not alone, as you can see. This man is as worried as you are because he's the one responsible for the stealing. And right now he can see a robot doing the job. Um, people have no idea how fast things are moving. I'm hoping that in the next few minutes I'll be able to show you what's happening, wake you up so you can pay attention to what's happening around you. Uh, if you look at the meta trends of what's going on, we have increasing global abundance, accelerating and demonetization and democratization of assets. Everyone everywhere is connected at gigabit speed. Everything everywhere is connected and you can know anything anywhere at any time. And I'll break it down for you. I want to start by showing you the how. How? How did we get here? Uh, well, there was a man that's very important to this conversation. This man here is Gordon Moore. Gordon Moore is the co-founder of Intel, the people that build the integrated circuits that are in our laptops. Uh, he did a study for about uh, seven years between 1958 and 1965, which then became Gordon Moore's law. Simple law, follow me, we'll get it. The law says from every 12 to 24 months, technology in its computing power would increase and price will decrease. Gordon Moore's or simple 12 to 24 months technology increases price will decrease this is what it really looks like how many of us remember pentium one you actually use Pentium. i had a job as a narrow cd banner did anybody do that yeah 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 how, how many of you remember windows vista vista we had one game the game was solitaire that's it. You're not going anywhere. All right. But Pentium 2 was better than Pentium 1. Pentium 3 was better than Pentium 2. Golden Moss Law. Every 12 to 24 months, the tech moves. The price becomes lower. Today, if I say I'm going to give anybody Pentium 4 in this house, they might insult me. They are not interested in it. That's Golden Moss Law. Let me give you a more examples. This is the actual study that they did, 1958. The first ever integrated circuit, two transistors. This is their first ever commercial product in the middle, the Intel 4004 about 2300 transistors now we have m7s and m5s in our laptops the laptop that is projecting this is probably sitting on about two billion transistors maybe transistors don't make sense so let's make it practical um, this on the left is the first ever GPS receiver. $120,000 is the price you will pay. You needed a bit of muscle. The one that is in your phone that allows you to order an Uber or a boat is less than a cent. Gordon Moore's law, 12 to 24 months, computing power goes up, price declines. Um, let's go to the next slide. On the left is an interesting thing. Uh, how many of us can guess what this might be? If you know it, don't say it. The devil uh, will come against you. Those who don't know are the ones I'm asking. Uh, who has any idea? Guess what this might be? A hard drive. This is a hard drive. Uh, let's guess the size of this hard drive. Just, just shout. What? One terabyte? 500? 512 megabytes? All those of you who are saying the right answer, I'm ignoring you on purpose. It's one kilobyte. Hey! Uh, where's your teacher? Uh, hey! This is the IBM Ramac 503, the world's first ever hard drive. The size was 5 megabytes. Uh, you needed an aeroplane to carry it. Some of you are saying, hey, ah, you had a floppy disk that was 280 something kilobytes. You are saying, hey, ah, fo focus. On the left, we now have terabytes. So everybody here was mentioning terabytes. Some of you have uh, 164 gig on your iPhone and it finishes. The space gets used up every single two hours and you need to delete stuff. We used to have something called the MP3 player. 
uh, the mp3 player if you were db then you could hang it in your neck uh, it was 128 megabytes all the songs in the world could go and there was space for your girlfriend to sleep there you have no idea some of you you didn't ever have to go through that world um, apollo 11 if you believe in it was landed on the computer using a computer that is 103 times a thousand times less processing power than the iphone 5 anybody uses an iphone 5 here <laughs> so we started from personal computers 1970s um, we could have computers that could fill a whole room uh, then we started with the World Wide Web the WWW actually started as a military technology called ARPANET that was supposed to help them communicate or stay in comms whilst they were in battle ARPANET then became a commercial product and it is what we use now uh, then smartphones came in when Steve Jobs announced the iPhone 3G and changed everything and now there are people here there are people you are dating you have never seen you've not bought a physical flower you send them whatsapp flower emojis your money is online through mobile money our entire world is digital next slide well again we have gone through different phases to get here for those of you who hear the word fourth industrial revolution and you've wondered where is the first one and the second one and the third one well the first industrial revolution was in the early 1800s uh, it was about mechanization and the production of the steam engine changed everything forever the second industrial revolution was mass production and assembly line and the, the discovery of electricity the, the the third one was automation computers and electronics the early days and now we have the fourth industrial revolution which is cyber physical systems and the internet of things and networks anytime anybody asks you at least you have an idea where those things come from again we're seeing that technologies are not only accelerating on their own but the coming together the convergence of technology is what is even more dangerous a very amazing example uh, it, it used to be if you wanted aerial shots you needed to get a camera guy and his assistant and you needed to get a pilot who could fly a helicopter and you put all those people in there and they fly up and they shoot aerial shots well with the growth or the uh, uh, the coming up of the drone you see that aviation has met media and out of nowhere a new industry has been born the guy that used to fly the helicopter is no more needed and the guy that used to be the camera guy in the helicopter is also no more needed so it is in the convergence of technology that we start we need to start paying attention to I wanted to bring this to your attention because of the next few things I'll be showing over the course of the next six to seven minutes I told you 12 minutes I'm lying um, anyway so this is amygdala amygdala is a biological thing it's something at the back of our brain it is responsible for fight or flight I think that um, black people and Africans have a very different amygdala to white people uh, for black people when we hear chichere is run before complain uh, that's the reason why black people don't discover anything we'll be home when you come you tell us the story white people hear chichere they want to know the source of the chichere God be with you that's why in horror movies the black person never dies it's always the white people that are dying so that is the amygdala but there is something that amygdala does to you when it comes to technology and I wanted you to know it and it is very simple anything that was invented between when you are 15 and 35 is new and exciting for you but anything after you are 35 is against the natural order of things some of you were in this country when people said Facebook was Antichrist. Uh, and then COVID came. And then all the people who said Facebook were Antichrist were now preaching on the Antichrist. I said, hey. The average lifespan of a company listed in an S&P 500 has dropped significantly. Used to be you could be around for up to 60 plus years. Today, 15 years, you're gone. Let's do a quick uh, check in the room. How many of us remember Panasonic? Show of hands. Where is Panasonic? Where is it? Uh, do you remember Siemens? Siemens. There was one called Sagem. Uh, you know it. Sagem. In fact, uh, Sony called Ericsson and they partnered. And then Sony left Ericsson. And now Ericsson. How many of us remember the Blackberry? You were there. Next slide. Well, this is what he used to call bandwidth uh, pair. Uh, call if you wanted to call uh, from 1245 now it's less than a dollar 
Uh, if you look at what it costs to launch a company on the internet, it is decreasing as you can see it. Uh, what it took for you to make a call from the U.S. to India has also dropped. The point is tech is making things easier and far more accessible to every single person. Uh, we're connecting the world already in 5G. Uh, in parts of the world, this is already here in Ghana. Uh, let me not go there. I'll get into trouble. Let's go to the next slide. These are the major players who are actually working on a working product that can give free internet to anybody in the world at gigabit speed. All these companies are working on it. SpaceX, Amazon, Boeing, Leosat, Samsung, the Chinese and the Koreans and all of them are working on something. Facebook, OneWeb are all working on giving free access to internet for everybody in the world. 4.2 billion people are yet to come. November last year, we hit 8 billion people in the world. What are you doing with this thing called the internet? Uh, we're living in some of the most amazing times, and I'm going to the end of my conversation, so follow me. At this point, it gets a bit raunchy, but we're going to land quite well. Um, first is for you to take a very good look at this particular thing that you're looking. Uh, on the left is every single gadget that we used to have. Uh, we used to have these cassette players in the top. We used to have camcorders, CD players, uh, Walkmans and Discmans, and every single one of those things has disappeared into that one thing in your pocket. Uh, today, if you actually go, uh, for those of you who work out in the gym, used to be you needed a physical gym instructor. Today, people can download a gym or a workout app, and some voice will be screaming, you know, three sets of apps, push, go, come, done, next set. And so you don't need a gym instructor. Used to be you needed, to, you needed a nutritionist to tell you how to eat. Well, today, recipe books and bots that can show you how to come up with recipes. The question I'm asking you for any of you who is in school studying for something, who is creating that app on that phone that is coming for that thing that you're studying for? Think about it. These are jobs that didn't exist 15 years ago. I still cannot explain to my mother what I do for a living because I wouldn't know how to explain to her. We didn't have AI-related jobs. There was no such thing as social media. We didn't have that. Data scientists, podcast producers, uh, cloud architects, SEO analysts, de developer evangelists, content marketers, online community organizers, all of this didn't exist. Which jobs will exist in the future that we are not being prepared for? Think about it. Not a single school, well, I, I would love to be educated, has any of these things updated in their curriculums and they are preparing kids for a world that they don't even know about. Next slide. Um, this is an interesting one. We've seen what Uber has done to the taxi fleet. Uh, when they came to Ghana, the Uber, uh, the taxi guys took them to court and started assaulting them physically. Did any of us see the news when Uber came? Uh, I am always almost mad at Google because as a young boy who uh, loved to read and knew how to write, I had a job as a guy that wrote romantic letters for people to give to girls they wanted. Today, they just go on Google and Google romantic text and they will get one million results. I don't like Google. Um, Amazon has totally decimated bookshops. Uh, today, you can have long distance, and it wouldn't mean anything because there are so many ways. Just about two months ago, news came out of China. They are enabling a technology that can allow you to kiss via distance. Uh, you can go and check that out. <laughs> now, I like that exact reaction because that's your amygdala saying, no way is it going to happen. Well, this is 1904. You can see horse and buggies running all around. The automobile had just came, and there were only two automobiles. Everybody else was riding their horses. How fast did this change? In 1917, you can see there's not a single horse in sight. Everybody is driving in a car. And for a lot of us today, I'm showing things to you that look highly improbable but would surely start looking like this. And I'm about to show you some of these things. So I needed to put this premise so you can adjust your amygdala and take this information serious. The first is we're now having self-driving cars. When they did a test for the Google Waymo car, it drove on the road for six months and it had two accidents. Two accidents. If you know uh, the rate or the numbers on accidents, over 16,000 people die every minute 
from accidents in the world. So if you look at a car being on the road and driving for six months with two accidents, it can tell you where we are going. Uh, GM auto autonomous cars without steering wheel is going to be out. This is already out. Uh, experts are predicting that ownership of cars would be a thing of choice and not a necessity because if you can Uber a Benz when you need it and Uber an Elantra when you need it, why do you owe the car and pay the insurance and everything? So it will just become another status symbol or something that has emotional uh, relations. Now, this is the amygdala. I'm showing you the things technology can already do. These are things we've seen before. Documentaries of how cars are assembled or big machines are assembled. And this is what it actually looks like. This is not a problem. However, uh, somewhere I need to find the day, 25th of May, 2016. This is seven years ago. Apple's supplier, Foscon, the people that actually build the iPhones. Because if you look at the iPhone, uh, you see it says made in America but assembled in China. The company that does that actually replaced 60,000 of their workers with robots because fixing an Apple phone is methodical. It's you take this chip and you put it here. My brother is a, a watch creator and builder, so he might understand this. You can feed that information to an algorithm that will control a robot. The robot will not have a bad day, no mood swings, no time of the month, no effort with my girlfriend. They give me breakfast, my heart is not working, none of that. And so when you do this, are you being an effective leader or are you being wicked? I will let you answer that. Next slide. Uh, it, this will be interesting because in this part of the world, let me shut up and save myself. But a policeman is coming that will not lose any life if you shoot at it. But if you take real human beings to go and battle hard criminals and they shoot a bullet, you might lose a life. How do you outrun this? It won't stop and take water. It won't listen to bribe nothing. It will catch you and put you down. Next slide. This is a security guard uh, who is running as a robot using AI systems. It works in the Uber company's headquarters, and they don't have a physical human being who is a bodyguard. This thing runs guard. You get into trouble, it lock you up, no way to go out until real people come and carry you into where you're supposed to be. Um, Pizza delivery, and delivery people give a lot of people stress. We can't wait for this to come because I know what delivery people have done to people in this room. But you could have a drone deliver your assets to you with no problem. Well, the, the problem is somebody's probably thinking, oh, more the lights have no they stay on. Which one is drone delivery? Calm down. I told you about Amegla. Next slide. Uh, taxi drivers are not needed. There are full driverless cars that do not need anybody to man them. Um, next slide. Uh, waiters, I am actually full-time based in Dubai. I only come to Africa for work for like the last one year. And this is very regular in Dubai uh, restaurants. You will see robots just move around. They will bring your food. They will take the payment and they will leave. Next slide. Um, this is for long-haul tracking. It says the world's first self-driving semi-truck hits the road and was able to deliver its work without any help. Shipping logistics, we don't need anybody. Next slide. Uh, it was really good when we had only human beings who were involved in the law space. I'm not making this up. You can go and do the research yourself. Clifford Chan strikes deal with artificial intelligence provider Kira. And we had an AI lawyer, Ross, which was hired by its first official law firm since ChatGPT came out this is actually old news and you shouldn't even worry about this AI can do way better than this next slide uh, AI help desk and bots uh, receptionists and stuff like that we're using computing to take care of some of these things next slide AI and the medicinal world uh, we're going into synthetic biology we're going into nanotech if you are in the health space and you don't know about a technology called CRISPR Cas9 I don't know what you're doing in health because over the course of the next five to ten years, you will not be able to do anything in medicine without tech. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is how some hospitals already look like. I've seen this in a few parts of the world that I have been. Uh, next slide. This one I really wanted to end with. Uh, how many uh, amazing cooks in this house? Or do I have a professional chef in this house? All right, let's check your proficiency as cooking. Uh, can you cook? 200 meals perfectly. Raise your hand. You raise your hand, give your husband now. 200 meals perfectly. Well, this is from Molly Robotics. This is a chef. It can, Hilda Bassi, it can already cook 2,000 meals. When I got this slide, it could cook 2,000 meals. You update the recipe, you show it the process, and it will do it perfectly. A lot of our, a lot of our mothers and fathers and chefs, a lot of what they do is actually guesswork. Uh, I have somebody in my house, before she brings the food, she gives a warning. Uh, 
uh, you know, because that is human error. When a robot is doing it, there's no such human error. So if you think cooking is safe, think about it when it comes to technology. This is a self-driving truck that got shipment across the country 10 hours faster than a human being. Um, Drones are coming to carry uh, in Dubai. They announced that they are actually working out with NASA how to have air traffic regulations so that we can start seeing flying taxis as early as 2025. These are things that are happening that you need to be aware of. Next slide. Um, this is 4K holographic display. The beauty of this is very simple. Uh, we only know one person to be omnipresent. If you believe in uh, the religion called Christianity and you believe in God, it is only God that can be omnipresent. Well, this tech allows you to do that. What it does is it allows you to be at one place where the four, uh, 4K holographic display machine is set on you and you can appear on different places at the same time. The Prime Minister of India India used this for his last political campaign. So he used to go in front of one crowd and address 15 rallies at the same time. And everybody would start arguing that he is here, he is there, he was here with ours. And that was what mobilized the kind of support he needed to win the elections that he won. And this tech is available today. This is Yuval Noah. Uh, Yuval Noah is speaking from Israel and he's showing live in Canada and they are having the section with him. This would be revolutionary for men of God, for people that organize conferences. So I could be anywhere and appear on any stage in the world. I hope the aviation industry is paying attention. Um, this is an important video that I want us to watch. I'm wrapping up in the next three minutes. Please play this video. I want everybody to pay attention so we see what is happening here. So who is this? Can we all shout the name? All right. And is that Barack Obama? Don't read what is on. Just look at the person. Let's wait and watch the video fully. And what you should know is that thanks to the Affordable Care Act, your coverage is better today than it was before. Women can get free checkups. You can't get charged more just for being a woman. So now can you tell me who is the real Barack and who is not? Very, very hard times. Can anybody tell me the difference? Then they can make you say anything. It can be a past video. It can be a new video. That's the little boy that created it, 21 years old. So hit pause if you can or go to the next slide. Let me ask you a question. Think about this. The operating system of our world is seeing, is believing. Which of these four are you believing? Because two of them are not the real Barack Obama. And everything they said, he never said it. Our laws, our democracy, fake news and misinformation through journalists, you are the CEO of a company, you wake up on Monday morning with a video saying your company is a crappy company and everybody should leave it. But you never said it. How much is our society preparing for this? How much are media people and journalists preparing for this? Next slide. Next slide. All right, so we've seen this before. We've seen tech come and tech go. This was the weaving industry. We never thought the weaving industry would go. Uh, there used to be people who were paid top dollar to be elevator operators. And there used to be people who used to man ATM machines. They were ATM specialists. When you get there, they will be there to make sure you are able to do your transaction. This is not new. So, what should we do? I cannot come here and pour this information and not give you some uh, take-home action points that you can actually do for yourself. So, the first, I'm glad that there is a school here and the owner of the school is here because the first is our education. We need to look at the skills and strategies that are going to be required for this new world that we're seeing. So, again, I think I have, let's go to the next slide, one last video that I'm going to show you. Play this video for them. And for anybody who's schooled in Ghana, um, when you see this, I'm sorry in advance. So, this schooling system is in Finland and recently in Denmark. They combine the power of artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and augmented reality. 
uh, the kind of learning that they are learning is experiential learning. So everything that they learn about is projected. They see it. They touch it. They feel it. Um, this boy didn't even go to school. He's sick and he's in the house, but he can still enter class. And that's his avatar sitting in class. And Peter can join what is happening. Uh, they do not actually work on schoolwork in order to get grades. They work on schoolwork to score points, and they can use those points to shop at grocery shops, buy toys, buy. They do not get graded for the thing that they're learning. This is somebody learning engineering. The professor is in a real factory in the real world. He's trying to build something. He has a problem. He calls his professor. His professor can join from wherever, show them what it is they're working on and how they can augment it. Learning is ever continuous and ever available for everybody. This is possible. Next slide. Now, this is where I get into trouble sometimes. Let me help you. This is why I get into trouble sometimes. This is why I get into trouble sometimes. It takes $19,000 to have that system work in a classroom. $19,000. Have you heard the kind of numbers they call on the radio? And the things we spend? I'm trying to stay safe. We need to change our education and focus on humanity, ethics, creativity, and imagination. Make sure that we are preparing people for a world where computing, tech, and AI can do what they do, and human beings can also do the best that we do. We need to focus on the more important skills, sense-making, novel and adaptive thinking, computational thinking, uh, transdisciplinarity, cognitive load management, social intelligence, cross-cultural competency, new media literacy, design mindset, and virtual collaboration. Real skills that can never be taken from you regardless and irrespective of what happens in the world it needs to be lifelong learning you cannot go to school learn something become an expert and that's it if you do not continually plug in and update yourself you're going to be redundant in a split second uh, last let's go to the next slide i want to end with a story um i don't know him from anywhere i've never met him before <laughs> it, you better talk to wikipedia <laughs> I don't know him from anywhere. I've never met him before. But this young man took a video in China. He was in a bus, and people refused to sit with him because of the color of his skin. The video went viral, and through the power of technology, that young man has single-handedly sold Africa to the world probably more than all the tourism boards in every African country put together. That is the power of technology. I end like this. Uh, tech in and of itself is an agnostic tool. It's neither bad nor good. Uh, it's what we do with it that sends the results that we're looking for. I want to say to you very humbly uh, that Africa is waiting for you just like Kobiche picked up the mantle. Uh, Africans are the only ones who will solve Africans' problems. And this is what you might not like to hear, and I wrap up like this. If you're not part of the solution, then you are absolutely part of the problem. It says that evil thrives when the righteous do nothing. All you need to do to make sure Africa fails is do nothing. If you've enjoyed this, my name is Kwame A. Opoku. Thank you so much for having me.